Hey, it's Shaves, and welcome to another edition of AniTube Digest, where we go over the best and, uh, not-so-best anime YouTube videos to come out this week from the 4th of August. The 9th of August is a little short of a digest because, um, I realized just as I started recording this that I have a group watch to do. <laughs> but it's also because, um, I'm recording this a day early on Sunday because my internet's gonna be out for a week and I won't be able to upload Digest. It's a huge video, of course, so... I'm doing that before my internet goes away, so I'm doing it right now. Well, first for the videos that I thought were not good, I was not a fan. <laughs> mm -mm. And it, they're not the big, the biggest deal, but it really, it sucks coming from two guys that, like, have done this for a long time. Like, they've both been making videos for a while, so I don't know how, why they're still making, why they keep taking L's like that. Why, not keep taking, one of them's keeping to take L's, because it's been a lot of L's from them, in my opinion. But um, Geek Archaeology, uh, he put out a few videos this week, but I happened to check out the anime aesthetic in Land of the Lustrous, because, I don't know, it's a topic I was kind of interested in. Um, but I think he botched it. It's very short, which doesn't help him in this case, because he, he bogs a lot of the video. Um, like, the, the length is, is a detriment in this case, because he spends almost half of it talking about, like, what the anime aesthetic is defining what anime is. Just defining what anime is. I'm like, well, what does this have to do with... What? Huh? <laughs> like, I couldn't... And he, he acknowledges that it's a very tired subject. And he literally starts the video as like, what is anime? Now, I know that's a very whatever. And I'm like, yeah, it is. So why would you do that? <laughs> it, it was so tired. Immediately. Immediately exhausting. I was like, come on, dude. And maybe I don't have to, you know, go after him or stuff, and I could just be like, well, I'll just click off and watch something else, I guess. But I wanted to see where it went, and um, it wasn't great. Because, <laughs> like, I think the only thing he really brought up about Land of the Lustrous is that by being CG, they were able to move the camera more, like, more in wild places, which is true. But um, really barely scratches the surface of what the aesthetic of Land of the Lustrous is, which has been explored by other people way better and in way more depth so it's i don't know it's like what it was just it's a very weird like this is just a video that happened like it just kind of appears i guess and um this is i think a a, a symptom of what happens when i don't when people don't have an understanding of what's been happening in the greater span of YouTube, like if you don't go out and be like, okay, what has been said on this topic? Like an academic space. I mean, I'm not trying to make it academia because like a lot of people are just doing this for fun or whatever, or their own personal expression. But the way Joe from Pause and Select has talked about how AnyTube is by definition not an academic space because none of us are peer crediting each other and like none of us are like, None of us are looking at what other uh, other people have done and what we can add to the conversation and not necessarily repeat the same thing. Um, and, I, because, and I think the lack of that results in a lot of videos like this. And this is very emblematic of a lot of videos that just feel very derivative and substanceless, honestly. And it's, it's I, I mean, it wasn't offensive or anything like that, but it just felt really trite <laughs> to me. And but maybe I'm being very uh, harsh on it, but... I just noticed one of my posters, I think, is, yes. Oh, that'll have to do. So, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. Um, again, it's weird that since Geek Archaeology's been doing this for so long, does that mean he's kind of, like, running dry of ideas? So that doesn't that doesn't seem right. I, I don't know. I've, I've liked other videos from him, for sure. But this was just one of those things where I was like, what the hell is the... Come on, dude. <laughs> and the other one is from Professor Otaku, What Makes a Good Mecha Show?, and I wanted to hear this from him because he seems to be very strongly opinionated about specifically mecha anime, right? And has all these very, like, I don't know. He just, I can't get, I've, I've yet to really get a grasp of what his favorite shows are and, like, what he really values in media and what, like, he likes, you know? Um, and I didn't get that answer here either. It really, it was literally a discussion about the difference between super robot anime and real robot anime. And uh, why, <laughs> why, I, like I get bringing this up of like what makes a good mecha show. You have to understand its its goals and stuff. You can't expect uh, elements in a super robot show to be in a real robot show or a real robot show in, in a super robot show. Um, I get that, but like it was a very general general. It felt very generalization. I don't know generalizing. That's the fucking word. Jesus shapes. Um, it just. 
it felt like it was cover like make you know making blanket statements about super robot anime and like it's like do you know Gurren Lagann exists <laughs> like do you know it's a super robot anime with like not very episodic like it's a little episodic but like still has a progressive storyline and an ongoing thing and I don't know it didn't seem well read uh which was very weird because I know he's well read <laughs> it was like what are you talking about and like he starts the video is like well I was like what makes a good mecha show well the same elements will make any show good oh, good characters it's just like that that's not helpful why are you bringing it up it's it's like what does this mean and i uh i think it's another video i think is something else where it's like oh yeah i remember what it was hopefully i don't forget actually i will in case i forget but i remember um i watched man and my matt's video later on i'll talk about it more but like he said at one point um i don't understand <laughs> i don't know why i'm making this video or something like that and i'm like don't say that or it's like i don't i'm not sure what the point of this video is it's like how do you not know <laughs> like figure that out and, and if you say that in your video everyone in the audience is like well i don't know what the point is of me watching it then <laughs> like right like what <laughs> anyway um it's not like professor otaku did that but like it made it feel like that it was like it he was kind of undercutting his own points like oh who am I? what do i know or something like that i don't know he had that vibe towards the end where he's like oh uh, i don't know but it's like this could have been a video that he excels at because it's not like directly taking something apart i guess it's really talking about positive elements but it, it doesn't feel like that it's like what is this ah like <laughs> it's it's really frustrating um not a fan no i was really really unsmitten with it as I usually am with his videos, unfortunately. Although, I, like, I can tell like, he's been here around for a while and he really cares about this stuff if he's still making these videos and stuff. It's like, I am waiting for those, for that, like, yeah, that was really engaging and I felt, I felt that was great or something. I don't know. It's still waiting. I don't know. Not very good. And now for the videos that I thought were decent. They're pretty good. I, I was like, all right. Okay. I'm going to talk about a next taku video that he wanted me to discuss. Racism in anime, a retrospective, hour-long video. Says video essay in the title. So, you know, he's really, really going for it in this one. Um, as a retrospective, going for... I like the spine of this video. He structures it in a way of talking about a lot of different series. An indiscriminate number of them. It's not like 10 or something like that. I don't remember how many, really. Uh, and they're all different, varying in, in degrees of severity of what he, how much he talks about them. I like it, I find it funny that he uses FMA in the thumbnail, but and he mentions FMA, but he's like that's been talked about so much. I'm not gonna buy, I'm not gonna dwell on it. And, and he's like, it's the goat. It's obviously fantastic. It's a great representation of it. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know why you, I don't know why you just kind of writ that. Up. Like it's fine to like, you know talk about other things that maybe people don't talk about as much although you know it's still code geass and the fishman thing in one piece and um there's a few deep cuts you know he talks about shinsekaiori that's pretty cool um ends it with interspecies reviewers but to that point the um the structure of the video was kind of interesting because he starts from child shows or you know kid oriented shows like pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, just pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and then goes through Shonen Jump and then kind of more mid-tier, like, teenager, young adult things, uh, and then ending it kind of on more adult shows and, and then explicitly adult shows like Interspecies Reviewers. Um, so I like that, that, that overall structure. I think that was, that was neat. Um, and I think he did a decent job analyzing all the shows and he, he didn't seem, it didn't seem like a lot of them were outright poor or wrong information or, um, that they weren't explicitly racism or anything like that. I think all of them were on topic, uh, to covering the, a very sensitive and um, controversial politicized topic. And he explicitly didn't want to make this political. And I think that was more of a way to not alienate his audience of kind of memers and, you know, get them to watch it. Uh, instead of like, I, I, I feel like he might've just been worried about getting something wrong and um upsetting people i know he doesn't care as much about like not upset about upsetting people he's like well that, that's that, that's gonna happen regardless kind of deal um but i just felt that he was tiptoeing around the the real life 
you know the the consequent the, the the actual parallels here like you know things that are actually happening in the real world um i think if you actually brought those a aspects up um you know not to make it political i'm not saying he needs to make it political but i think at least acknowledging the realities that it still exists and it's not like a, a bygone thing um which is what a lot of people's suspicions are um i like his point that his examples are not uh shoeing shoehorning this idea just for the sake of representation and diversity or whatever or or what what have you but um i would have liked a little more acknowledgement of what the problem like i like that i also like that each of the problems he he presents in each of these examples are covering a different aspect of of racism and and um he articulates them fairly well i think but um i think if you went a little step further and really talked about the real life problems that this is facing and you i know you can't exactly speak from that experience um i certainly can't i've seen it done where it's like they um specifically bonsai pops Af afro samurai video where like they really bring it into the real world and the recurrent reality um i think to do that to not do that um is to kind of be a little not going all the way with it and not really making something special in that way i think i feel like it's it's kind of like it's a little toothless is, is kind of what i was feeling uh about this video um it's like yeah all this stuff is is definitely good to say and i'm happy you're saying it um and he's saying how like you know, not, a of, not a lot of people are really making these points and it's like sure um although i i i imagine it is been talked like Gios has obviously been talked about with this frame of thinking just in other places and under the name review or something like that. Maybe not like if you search on YouTube, there's an immediate video specifically talking about it. I don't know. I haven't looked. I haven't done my research in that way. But like, I think these, these are very pop. Almost all of the shows you talk about are very popular. I think the only one that isn't popular is Shinza Kayori, which like people who are into anime kind of know what that is as well. Um, so it's not like the deepest cut you could make. Um, I will say, and this is obviously not like me criticizing your video for not including this example or something, because how would you know? Um, of course, but like, you know, um, I just wanted to mention it to you because I know you're, you would want to, you wanted feedback on this. And, uh, I just wanted to, as a side note, a anecdote thing, it's actually interesting. Um, in terms of children's anime, a lot of them do focus on a lot of these serious, more adult serious topics, uh, pre-cure, um, has a lot of this sort of like, um, not specifically racism, I guess, but uh, a lot of adult problems and a lot of inner conflict and stuff. But Ojimaja Dorami, one of my favorite shows, very much a kid's show, very much just for like six-year-old girls, um, <laughs> uh, has an episode where one of the characters has a black best friend from the United States and she moved to Japan and that's, you know, so she's obviously from the, the, from the United States. Um, but she's at her, the friends are at a birthday party, uh, for this, for this girl. And, and, and then one of the girls who's invited, not one of the main characters, she's kind of like this catty, like, oh, Josema, like, oh, ho, ho, you know, kind of rich and, you know, not the main, not one of the main characters. Um, she sees a picture of, uh, some of this girl's friends and, uh, she's like, guess which one is my best friend? And she singles out everyone except the black girl. And uh, it, it's like, why don't you think um, it's like it, it kind of brings up brings up that point. It's like, oh, I didn't think that. And then um, the rich girl is kind of like, oh, she couldn't be the black one. Right. And, and she's like and, and Momoko kind of explodes. It's like, why? Why can't my friend be black? And, and it's this whole it's this whole conflict that arises out of that. And it's very explicit and cohere, coherent to the real world. Like there's a lot of like analogous count, you know, kind of like parallels here, like one piece is using fishman which are our fictional species to tell this real theme and the similar thing with uh with all that and then kiosk is obviously using japanese which is a real thing but britannia as a fictional thing whatever but yeah no there, there's something like that but um i don't know i think each of the each of the points that you bring up each of the series you bring up and the the issues that they 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 bring up <laughs> really good wording shapes really good use of words very quite the wordsmith um i feel like each of them could have been used with a little more of a real life counterpart of like what's i don't know try to, try to be more like 
socially aware, I suppose. But I get that. I get that your intention was not to do that, and you didn't want it to be politicized or or, uh, or alienate your audience, perhaps. But I think that was what felt like was missing for me uh, as a as a significant X factor. Um, but I will say, kind of the, the one thing that was really making this a slog um, is not the length necessarily, but the way it's edited, um, very repetitively and um not all that engaging and that's not much to you know the editor has however however long he had to edit this probably not a whole lot of time when you make it such a big video like this it's really important to keep it visually engaging because then it becomes a real slog and um that's uh, that's struggles that i've had with with my videos as well making several hour long videos um you do have to keep it like you know consistently engaging and, and relevant to 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 what you're talking about every sentence you say needs to have the corresponding clip to to what you're talking about i think the moment you have a clip that is repeated twice or three times like a sequence of clips and it's the same sequence of clips that was it's just copy and pasted in the over and over again like three times in a row for i think it was i think it was one piece that had like the same sequence of like chopped up clips pasted three times and then that happened several times and that's a shortcut um and it's like you know what it be for these big videos and it's it's hard to find this sort of footage and stuff so this is it is a gargantuan task i'm not knocking the editor completely here but it is kind of uh it lend it leads it to being a much less polished product and much harder to go all the way through unless someone is really engaged with you as a person and, and how you're talking about this, which some people are, of course, you know, you're very, you're very successful in that way. Um, I do think you have a very, I think you do carry the video with your performance and your script. Um, but I don't know if the visual component was all the way uh, engaging. I think there was, it, it felt it, it was repetitive and it was a lot of your face and a lot of the, I mean, the character avatar and stuff like that. That's good for a little while. And it's good for a meme video, maybe, but uh, hour long video essay, not the best. It, it starts to kind of hinder the, the effectiveness of the video for me. It makes a lot of the information kind of wash over and it's, it doesn't leave as much of an impact, I guess. Um, but that's that would be my feedback. I think it's I think it's really great that you're talking about this and it really sets you apart from a lot of YouTubers because the fact that you are willing to do this sort of content as well as the meme content and a lot of collaborations, you're doing a lot of things and a lot of different stuff and um, constantly reinventing and and like improving yourself. And that's that's a sign of a really good YouTube, a really healthy uh, career in terms of you know YouTube success and everything. I think it's awesome, and that's why I respect you a ton. Um, and I'm very happy you're putting in something like this. I would suggest maybe to help with the visual component and maybe if it wasn't so much of a, a burnout because I have obviously I think you mentioned it in the video too. the editor is like I'm so sorry this is an hour long and it's like I'm sorry editor son or whatever um I think if this could have been a series of videos um you know spread out maybe over a couple weeks or something and each video each each anime gets its own section of supports and that way the the visual component of each one was able to get more proper attention I think you could have had but I know the meme is now, it's kind of a meme now, but like a better clip selection. I, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, where, where it's like, at least it would be different clips every time and not the same exact sequence of clips pasted every, you know, three or four times. Um, it wasn't a, such a blatant problem in the whole video, for sure. I think it was definitely better in some areas than others. Probably wherever the editor was more comfortable with the series, so they were more familiar with it, maybe. Something like that. Um, or you gave them more information of like here take from these episodes and these episodes and stuff like that um, but there there was some I think some signs of fatigue and signs of uh, uh, it was it's a difficult it's a it, it's difficult with those resources and with that time constraint I think um, so that'd be my feedback I did like the video a good deal though I was I was um, I'm happy you made it but it does have some stuff to it good shit kind of neat put out a video should you visit Japan just because you like anime and he, he is finding this wheelhouse, I think. He's really talking more of a tra as a travel-based uh, YouTuber. And I don't talk about them as much on Digest because a lot of them are not focusing so much on anime specifically. Um, it is about Japan mostly, but I don't, I don't feel great talking about those channels unless it is talking specifically about anime. Um, I don't know. It just kind of gives me a, a weird vibe. 
but I was happy that that Neat is continuing this uh, this this you know milk I guess effectively milking his trip of Japan, which is a really you know made a lot of a huge impact on him, and he learned a lot and um, was able to take a lot from it. Um, I like this video because as a recommendation of um, you know coming from the mindset of like wanting to visit Japan because of this thing and. I think it is sort of a, a widely known thing, at least in terms of the travel community, in terms of like the Japanese, these these types of YouTubers. I'm sure they'd probably tell the exact same thing. Um, so I don't know if it's an entirely new subject or new answer. It seems like a self-evident sort of answer. Like, no, of course not. Um, although he does does he does say, yes, you should. You should visit Japan just because you like anime. Because Japan is a great country, you should totally visit because it's an awesome country for all these other reasons. It's not just because of anime. Um, and it's great because you like anime, because you get a, a better appreciation for it. Um, so it is a good idea, ultimately. I, I was very happy to hear that. I was like, all right. That wasn't the answer I was expecting. And, and like, but he, you know, the, obviously the, the information he does have where it's like, it's actually not that big of a deal in Japan. Uh, my buddy and I was flipping through channels expecting to see anime, and there's very, very little of it in comparison, um, which totally makes sense. And he's like, you might see all this stuff uh, posted everywhere on trains and stuff, but it's kind of just promotional stuff. They don't really pay it no mind. And there's a lot of good information in here. And um, I really enjoyed it. And uh, he's great. I, I, I'm liking his channel a good deal. Um, it's not as anime oriented, but that's okay. I think it's anime oriented enough <laughs> in terms of, uh, especially in comparison again to other travel YouTubers. So that was cool. I liked that. Manime Matt had a World God Only Knows video. The harem anime genre is dead. <laughs> and, you know, very dramatic title and thumbnail. But uh, I like the beginning of this video. I like how he starts it. It's a lot more atmospheric, a lot more uh, kind of on the ball of stuff. I actually kind of liked it. Um, I think he broke the. I think he broke that immersion a little bit by having the intro, and then he's like, "This video is sponsored by me," and I was like, "Oh, okay." And, and he brings it into more of his personal thing, and then he jumps right back into it. I would have probably saved that for the end, and he has something like that at the end too. But it's like, I wouldn't have. That would have been my choice if not to like not to try to break that immersion you have. I really like it though. Um, I like the direction he's going with his with his editing specifically, the the audio visual presentation. Um, in terms of the subjects with with uh, the harem anime, um, I think there's a bit of a there was a bit of a conflict for me where at first it was really seeming to be that generalized, pretty typical uh, opinion of harem anime where it's saturated and not as much of a prevalent genre nowadays, and it's only used for for monetary for like to, for a quick buck. I think he keeps saying, and it's like, oh, yeah, I guess, but it's you. Know, I don't know it's 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 a very tired um opinion you know opinion i guess but like a tired thing to say i think about the harem genre um especially since it's not really dead isn't kanajo okarishimas basically a harem isn't that kind of one of the most popular shows this season is it really dead i did that's just kind of what i was thinking that whole time i was like um i don't know about that <laughs> and he says it like it was relegated to isekai and whatever and i was like ah Nah, I, th I don't know if it's completely gone, uh, personally, but this was pretty high praise for World God Only Knows, and it pretty generally summarizes kind of like this is the gist of the show kind of deal and why it's so cool. Um, I like his analysis of it, for sure. Although the thing that was conflicting with me was towards the end, he frames Harem as kind of this, like, oh, it's usually not that great, but this what show does it different. This show's better, or whatever, you know? Kind of typical. But then he says how, like, he he feel he feel I forget the choice of words, but it was like, um, kind of melancholy, that this the this was the last gasp of it, and I'm like, so you like this genre? I didn't get that impression at all from the video. It felt like this was an exception, um, a notable. Uh, it's like actually this is this is this is the good shit. Uh, but the rest of the stuff, it, the rest of the genre is nothing to write home about, kind of deal. That's what kind of what it's feeling like to me. But then you bring this point up as like, oh, man, I wish we had more harem anime is what it felt like. I, I can't remember the exact wording, but there was something about it that was just like, wait, what? <laughs> That's kind of weird. Um, that I, I would have to maybe I'm probably misremembering it. Um, but I just remember towards the end having that one like this one line of like, uh, OK, 
but then weren't you framing harem anime? And he obviously, obviously wouldn't go and name anything. He didn't name any of these harem anime of like, he didn't want to throw anything under the bus that he probably hasn't actually seen. <laughs> what it be? I get that. Um, so probably a safe choice, but uh, it, it felt very, it was hard to then divorce that of like, oh, you're just kind of talking generally. Mm, you know what I mean? That's kind of what it felt like. But like, again, I think he's, his presentation is actually, I think is getting better. I actually really like it. Um, and again, I, I mean, World God, World God Only Knows is kind of a cool um, show to talk about and, I, and not as not as often talked about either. It's kind of kind of out of the blue, actually. It doesn't feel like super relevant or something. Um, so I like that they talked about it and in a positive light and in a recommendative kind of light. And I liked that. It was nice. Got a replay value video. Rent a girlfriend is driving me crazy. Uh, and it doesn't give away the game of what the, the video is about, but I certainly will. It is about the, the soundtrack and its implementation in the, the show itself. And soundtrack implementation doesn't get talked about very often. It does by him, apparently. Apparently, it's a recurring trend on his channel. I'm not as familiar with it. I guess this might be my first time really watching through all, all of one of those videos. But um, I certainly enjoy it. Uh, He's very, very meticulous, <laughs> very specific and like uh, talking about like very minute details and um, in very specific uh, terminology, um, which can be kind of uh, overwhelming for me as a viewer, I guess. It's not as engaging for me, especially if it's a show I don't care as much about, like Rent a Girlfriend. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think it's very sound analysis and... Um, I think he engages with the audience pretty well the whole time where, where like he's like we notice this part about it and it's, it, he shows you a lot of clips he really gives you like an impression and not just like a oh trust me it's like this sort of deal this is what happens with a lot of videos i think a lot of them end up being like uh don't worry this is how it is just trust me <laughs> but he really gives you a lot of those music cues and a lot of the stuff there's some parts where he's like i can't show you everything because of copyright but um so i like that about it uh he really engages with the audience in that way. Um, and, you know, I like that he... I, I've seen his takes on Twitter about Rent a Girlfriend. <laughs> he does not like the, the source material very much. Um, but he was. I was very happy to see that he didn't really bleed that into the show itself and his opinion about that. He purely wanted to talk about it on a technical standpoint and, uh, and what the adaptation specifically is doing. And it is very bizarre how, like, the... It's using a lot of very weirdly inappropriate uh, terminal, you know, tones and and styles of music, like classical with or like classical mixed with like electronic and like video game music. It sounds a lot of it sounds like video game music, where it's like, but what if this is like a a game? It's, it doesn't seem to use any other game terminology or aesthetic besides the music, and it's like I guess that's a choice. I don't know how much it meshes with the, the rest of the, the presentation. So it's like, yeah, that is really interesting. Um, although I will say, again, a lot of that analysis sounds sound, <laughs> but um, a lot of it kind of flies over my head to where it was hard for me to process what exactly was driving him crazy, quote unquote, because there was it was mixed with because he talks about how like the, the soundtrack is very Jekyll and Heidi. Like there's there's stuff that's good. And this stuff is like, wait, what? Um, mysteriously weird choices. Um, and I think the way he articulated both of those didn't have the same contrast that he's selling it to you as, uh, where he's talking about it. And I couldn't tell from the tone of his voice or the, his wording or something about it. I couldn't tell if it was like a, okay, so you like this choice or you, 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 this is what's driving you crazy. Like it, it, a lot of it felt very blended together because it was so much good, and and then the the bad stuff I think kind of gets like picked. It's it's like peeking through sort of deal. So I think the driving me crazy thing was driving me a little crazy because it was like where where is it driving him crazy? <laughs> it's like I don't I don't I'm not getting communicated the same sort of uh, quote unquote insanity. I go with the the sense of you being driven crazy. I guess. Maybe that's hyperbolic. It's just a hyperbolic title. You don't actually feel that way. <laughs> but um, that was what I was sort of expecting, I guess. Um, and what I was, like, looking for. 
because it's the title of the video. So I'm like, okay, which would be crazy? Uh, I was like, oh, that is weird or whatever. The, the, that emotion doesn't get as translated for me, I guess. But maybe that's not the point. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's that's this video. I uh, I enjoyed it for sure though. Cause it, again, like replay value is really, really sharp on, on noticing so many details. <laughs> and you know, I've, I, you can get in that space with anime YouTube. You can really start to really dive into stuff if you really look deep enough and, and kind of make these galaxy brain, not that it's necessarily galaxy brain or out of nowhere or something, but it's just very, very detailed and stuff. It's like, oh yeah, he's thought long and hard about this, <laughs> which is great. It's very admirable. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Cantant is back after a long time. Uh, they came out with a kind of a backlog episode. They recorded this during Radcon 4 and then the, the Brad Garlinghouse arc happened. Uh, so they're coming back from that. INA's high kick kept going and crashed. Nice. It's a Pokemon reference. I like that. Cra classic anime content featuring Endless Jess, which like, yeah, I feel like Jess really wasn't into it. <laughs> it didn't seem like he was very into it. it I think he was very un unamused by uh not the, the, the video itself but probably just the subject matter and uh it was a lot of of beckoning him to say something he's like yeah it's shit <laughs> and he didn't have a lot out you know he chimed in a couple of times it wasn't like he was like weighing the video down or something but uh it was definitely a noticeable lack of interest i think it was very communicable but of course you know digi and and best guy ever are are very enigmatic uh passionate um people especially if they're talking about mid this this ova this ova does seem very mid very not very boring and very a big bag of nothing um but i like the how much detail they were able to extract out of it and i appreciated that they actually gave all those examples very concretely like no this exact moment um it felt like you know a little editing here and there i kind of like the the steady cam or the, the camera i guess is panning to different like it was a live like kind of like a red letter media type of thing i guess I'm not much of a red little media guy, I don't know. But where like the camera was panning to different people very live, like as they're talking. I think that was a very engaging um aspect, if not a little, you know, the person needs some practice to kind of predict of where the conversation's gonna go. It's very hard to predict these things if someone's having a big back and forth. But I remember this one moment where like Nate and Jess were, were talking about two different th about stuff like a dialogue back and forth and the camera couldn't exactly decide where to put them and it kept like it kept like panning to wrong places I've been on that side of the I've been on that side of the camera before so I know it's very difficult but um there was moments like that it was like ah oh, yeah well would it be um but I was happy that element is there it's nice um but yeah it was a, it was a comfy watch I was happy to see them back and uh looking forward to I don't know if I watch the other ones with like the the, the latest seasonal stuff. Maybe if it, I'll maybe check one of them. It's like a if it's like a uh, kind of a different uh, different setup or something kind of interesting. But um, I was happy to see them back for sure. Worth talking about. I enjoyed that. And last we got an Avine Avine video. They, I, I, I should still I should really try Avine. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Hisoka versus Crollo. What really happened? Hunter Hunter analysis. Um, and this is like my favorite fight in the series, and it might be one of my favorite shonen fights, period. But it's been kind of a while since I read it. <laughs> kind of a long while. And a lot of stuff is very easily, like, goes over your head. Because um, Crollo info dumps a lot of stuff, but it turns out he was misleading on a lot of those facts. And he's actually kind of deceiving Crollo, uh, uh, deceiving Hisoka in a lot of in a lot of ways. And Avin goes really step by step with a lot of uh, a lot of his deception and uh and kind of clearing things up uh of what happened during that fight and the editing is really sharp in this I, I it's kind of like an amv of sorts it has a lot of adjustment layer uh transform stuff with like a like zooming and and you know stuff like that and it felt very amv ish but it provided for something very sharp i think it was a very engaging way to to edit manga i think um although i wasn't totally sold on uh erasing all of the text from it i like that it was used sometimes to, sh to highlight some text and that's what they say but there was other points where you mentioned their dialogue and there wasn't anything there and, and there's stuff like that i'm like i would have liked to kind of see the words there even though there might not be enough time on screen of like unless you pause uh you know what i mean 
I would have preferred the dialogue personally, but yeah, that's an artistic choice. That a, a difference of opinion. I like that it was an artistic choice. Period. That is that is something uh, worth mentioning. I just don't think it worked personally, but not like a detriment to the video all that much. Um, but it is a lot of in terms of like it's a very fast paced uh, fight and a lot of random stuff happens. Not random, I guess, but uh, this is very deliberately from the two fighters and and they're very advanced. Uh, skill and uh, intent and op seeking opportunities and things. They're very high level. Um, and I think Avine really conveys that with both characters and uh, and doesn't favor one or the other. I actually really like that too. Um, it doesn't feel like Avine's on one side or the other and, and or taking just from their perspective or whatever. Uh, I think I've been saying whatever a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really enjoyed it and I like the, the presentation in this being a lot sharper. Um, I think it was great. Good to see. Okay. And now let's talk about what I thought were the best tracks. Uh, best tracks. There's the if what I tell you. I'm, I'm the, it's straight up Fantano guy. Uh, best videos of the week, in my opinion. I do, of course, three weeks in a row, I think. I think this is three weeks in a row. What the what in any tube digest? <laughs> Hello. Well, what can you say? He's putting out Kino every week. I think is what, it was a, a comment I saw on, on this video. It's like, stop putting out Kino every week. And I was like, yeah, good shit. No, but <laughs> yeah, stop that. No, no. Um, I think he's on a roll. I think it's awesome to see. And he's been streaming a lot. And um, he's really finding a good zone, I think, and putting out a lot of great stuff. And in this case, it's a collaboration again. Um, and he, this was... The minute he kind of teased this on Twitter, I was like, oh my god, that makes complete sense. Because, <laughs> I mean, the three of them are on the on Weeb Club um, podcast, and they are, what the What's already made a, a big video on Bleach, and he's a big Bleach flan. Bleach flan. <laughs> um, and I know, I saw Numanji on Twitter, Always you did a reread re of Naruto, and big fan of that. Vindy into, you know, Vindy kind of covering the, the other bases with Dragon Ball, I think. And Craft Dwarf with, with covering One Piece. I think it's awesome. Um, and this is to talk about Shonen Anime's greatest moments. Um, though I will say the one s small, tiny, tiny, tiny thing. It's really not. <laughs> it's like, oh boy, here we go. Um, I really only feel that What the What cited a very specific moment. Um, whereas everybody else kind of talked about the thing they really liked the most about their particular favorite series and um i like that i think they're all great videos on their own actually um and i'm not saying it would be uh stronger separate or something i actually really like that it's a mix bit a kind of a mix and a collab sort of thing uh to get these to get everyone to kind of talk about their favorite shows in that way in a very favorable light i really like that because i feel like especially the how oversaturated these series are in the in the consciousness i think there's so much negativity around them and i really like that they're really pushing this idea of shonen positivity um, especially with Bleach. I think Bleach got an especially bad um, rap, and I think I mentioned that in uh, in What the What's video on it. So, like, it's great to see this from them um, and really get a better understanding of, of these of these series. Um, and it's not a big deal that they're not citing specific moments. I would say that the closest that Kraftsdorf is going for is, is the idea with Ace and his uh, fate. <laughs> I guess it's a very, like, you could just say it, but... You know, I don't say spoilers at the beginning of Digest or something, so I try to avoid spoilers. Um, the deal with Ace, I suppose. It, it's more talking about that dynamic with Luffy and Ace and that thing. Um, Numanji is mostly talking about Sasuke, and then he kind of bleeds into, Nar uh, into Naruto and other characters and stuff, but dealing with certain ideas. But I don't know if he specifically mentioned a sp specific moment besides maybe the uh, Itachi reuniting with Sasuke. I felt like that was the one that kept kind of coming back. And I guess the final confrontation... But you know what I mean? It just felt like they were talking way more generally about the series and about or about a specific character, a certain facet that they really like about it. Um, it didn't feel as much of a moments sort of thing. But that's not a big deal, of course. <laughs> it's still great analysis. And I love the I love the collaborative spirit. I like the intros that I assume what the what um, edited because his video is mostly edited the same way those other intros are, I feel. Um, so... I like those intros for sure. I, I really like it gave a good sense of cohesion. Um, and then, yeah, I like that Vindy, um, Vindy's t take on Vegeta um, showing the, the necessity. Sometimes it's necessary to ask for help. 
and um and that there's a there there can be strength still found in that i guess or does there's really nothing wrong with that and it's, it's a good thing um and how a lot of people can kind of struggle with that i really like that um i like that point a lot um that's not like the only i think the general video is pretty good though um and then yeah i think everyone's segments were, were really great um so yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of uh, explanatory, I suppose. Uh, I can't think of too many other moments off the top of my head that are like, you know, but like, I like that a good deal. Great job, you guys. And uh, I guess it's a kind of a part of a Hive Mind Mega Mix maybe series of stuff. So like, maybe some more. I think that'd be kind of cool, but you never know. I really like that What the What's starting some stuff and really being collaborative and bringing people in and stuff and uh, good shit, seriously. I got a video from Best Sonozaki uh, that came out this week from uh, called Shirobako Beyond Coming of Age. I have not seen Shirobako yet, but this video really convinced me that I want to save it as like my thousandth completed <laughs> or like something I watch even later than because I'm already very much deep into anime and I've watched a ton. Um, so I think I would geek out. I was geeking out at the video already, like as she was showing a lot of stuff of like, yeah, there's so much really cool stuff here um, and a lot of references and uh you know, it's a really sobering and uh, emotional take on on kind of the anime industry, and it, it both emboldens um, our love for it. And I'd love that. I would love to. I would probably think it was a great show, um, but I want to save it now. <laughs> now that you've yeah, that you've showed, the way you were describing it, I guess um, it's a pretty. It's fairly by the numbers in terms of uh, structure. It, although, but it actually made it fairly engaging, I guess. Um, Bess really went through, the, kind of went through the whole thing, um, kind of going moment by moment, not very uh, super detailed, but like covering basic points um, and then using those points to bring up points that um, sh that really stuck out to her in terms of uh, making this more of a coming of age story, I guess, and covered a lot of characters and a lot of things. And it was really engaging all the way through. I really like the, 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 um, the presentation of it too is very, very clean, but like, constantly engaging um visual uh visual choices and stuff nothing too fancy it doesn't really need it though um decently well read in terms of like you know not trying to make these grand sweeping statements about the anime industry i, I like that you brought up the sakagaboru article that was really great um and yeah i it really convinced me to watch it i mean i, I want to save it now I, I was more i was always wanting to watch it of course um but this was more like oh man, this is great. <laughs> yeah, kind of, it was one of the first, like, yeah, really selling me on this show, I guess. Um, and really, yeah, I, I really like the way you write things. I don't know what it is, but there's a really healthy mix of like, of your personal experience in life. And um, I like that moment, that anecdote you, you shared about talking with your friend about how like, you found something that you, like, you don't care if, uh, if you're in a crappy living situation and, and uh, as long as you get to do what you love, that's what matters to you. And then your friend was like, I just want to buy a house and have a family. I don't care what kind of job I have, no matter how much I don't like it. And uh, her bringing that up and it's like, I could sense this sign to this sort of like, I forget the word. I don't really want to put words in your mouth, so I don't remember, but it's sort of like resentment, I suppose, um, of like, man, you found something, but it's, it's just a difference of goals, I guess. Uh, but it was really effective, and I really liked it. Um, really good shit, seriously. It tempts me so often to talk about Hazel Never Talks every week because she puts shit out every week, and it's always interesting. It's always unexpected, and, like, I don't know what she's going to make next, and it's so cool, and I'm, I'm very okay with that, and I don't want to put any more pressure on her um, to, to make stuff and to make whatever. Um, but I, this particular one really affected me more. Um, to friends like Magnolias, um, it's it, it's so striking. I love the song choice so effing much, and I, it doesn't feel like two minutes. It feels like four, and I, I want to be in that moment fucking forever and shit. It's like, oh my god, this is the most Kino shit. Um, and it's a really interesting mix of live action footage that I don't know if she filmed herself. Um, footage that i definitely know she filmed herself because i'm pretty sure it's her uh i'm pretty sure it's like it's a, it's a shot that she keeps cutting back to of like of a, of a projector on a wall projecting some random stuff and very like abstract images um with her in front of the projection 
like kind of like at, at, at the wall and the projection is uh, hitting her as well um i'm pretty sure that's her it feels like that and then other live action footage i'm not sure if it's her or not or it feels like it feels like home movies and stuff and the glitchiness of, of everything feels very authentic but still it feels like it is it is intentional and, and put there on purpose but like still like it it's a real thing it feels like a home movies recorded over an episode of fully cooly and it has like the adult swim watermark and the 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 actual like footage quality feels very authentic and kind of like that malcolm <laughs> this is a weird comparison but like malcolm in the middle um you know the op in, in for malcolm in the middle <laughs> has like the the footage recorded of the tv and stuff like it has that that grainy quality to it and it was it was really interesting but still edited like an amv with with really good syncopation and um also really good just really good choices of, of imagery and like and invoking a certain feeling i guess and it has like this recurring like it's it's everything's intercutting with each other it's like a mashup of several different things it's crazy it's so good oh my god <laughs> it's like fuck i can't do this shit like she's way past me at this point and I, I don't know. It's it's sick. Um, and she's definitely taking influence from Gil for sure. But like, this is excellent. I I love the the style she's creating on her own, of her of her own really. And um, but the, the, it's intercut with like her words um, in the same kind of very quirky like way she spells things. Um, and it's very it's a very empath. I, I don't know if empathic is the right word. Endearing, heartwarming, nice kind of message to her friends like i'm so happy i have friends and stuff like that and like thank you i love you and, and stuff like that and it's so kino it's so good dude it's really good <laughs> like ah shit oh so that's the you know it's stuff like that that really bursts my interest i guess but like everything she puts out is so interesting seriously check her out i don't know why she has over, under 100 subscribers still like what the fuck happened guys seriously just check her shit out I th like all of it honestly but this especially i think is really kino and like if you like gill stuff i don't know why she doesn't have the same mass subs gill has i mean granted gill gill took a long time <laughs> it was a while for for gill to do that but seriously check her out i think she's fantastic and lastly i think it's fitting to save this for last uh yep this is ex this is what i was talking about you guys he can make good stuff fucking bennett the sage really good video on barefoot again uh 75 years later hiroshima it isn't just a review of Barefoot Gen. He actually went to Hiroshima, um, 70, the, the memorial uh, place in Japan, um, with, I guess, one of his co-writers, uh, back in November before the <laughs> before COVID happened. And he does relate it to kind of, co to, kind, of kind of to COVID and stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's really hard to remember it back then of, of how we felt in that in that time before COVID before COVID happens. It's crazy. Um, and he's very sober and very serious the entire time. Does not does not let up a single second. And at first, um, like halfway through the video, actually, I was starting to feel, okay, this is a little forced. The the very serious, like straight arrow, not not breaking, not no barely any inflection, rock solid, like you're like a like a gun to your head, like talking very serious and straight um the entire time um at first i thought that was a little distracting oh well, halfway by that time the halfway point i felt it was kind of distracting and um not all that necessary i feel like you can you can be taking this seriously without really forcing it it felt like it was forced he was forcing it but especially seeing the last third with him actually going to hiroshima and um and all of that it, it's not that it's forced it's that he genuinely feels that way and it really affects him emotionally um and it, it's really kind of affecting him um so i really like that reverence that he has for this subject matter it's very horrific and um needs to be taken very seriously um again i i feel like you know the the rigidness i think was a little distracting to the point where it's like yeah you can be both serious and talk normally you know what i mean um but i think it was well warranted by the end of it you could tell that this is really means something to him and uh i he was almost kind of on the verge of tears towards the end in terms of like talking about uh the art that he saw in this particular museum by the victims of hiroshima by some of the survivors um 
which is insane, uh, sounds incredibly heartbreaking and uh, difficult to, to, to think about and to experience and to learn about um, and to immerse yourself with and to really feel the gravity of. Um, I really liked the, the tastefulness of this, and I think he puts it in a really good light without shying away from his some of his problems. And it's like some of it is it's like having to do with adaptation and stuff, but like you know some of it feels kind of clunky. Um, and you know he's able he's he doesn't sugarcoat it, so I was happy with that too. Um, I think it's fantastic. I think he did a really good job with this. This is what I know he can make. This is it. I swear. And I this, this was just as good as his video gore eye video and stuff like that. I think it's awesome um good on him check it out seriously i think it's a great video and that'll do it for this episode of anytube digest thank you very much for watching thank you to my patrons for making this possible including beam burst echo flugmorph hazel jawburst kuiper kanra kazuki my anime pod najbeb unique namasaurus and yellow cheese thank you very much for watching you have a good week yo peace